There's been quite a bit of new Sonic X Shadow Generations news lately because of Summer Game Fest. I'm sure most, if not all of you, have already seen the new trailer for it, where Shadow gets his wings and all that, but there's been a lot more than just that trailer that's been coming out about this game since Summer Game Fest, because there was actually a playable demo there of the first level for people to play. Lots of people have given their thoughts on the demo since they were able to play it, so I figured it's time to go over all the new stuff about it, including what I think Shadow Generations is doing right, and how it can still be improved based on what I've seen of it so far. So let's get straight into things, starting with the trailer. This new trailer shows off a lot more than the first one, the most obvious being the new Shadow levels for Bullet Station and Kingdom Valley, both of which I'm really excited to see more of, but we also get more of a glimpse into what Shadow's story might be about, his new Black Arms powers. With this power. Before we get into that though, I do want to say that I'm glad we're getting a lot of different levels for Shadow here, because I wasn't exactly expecting that many to begin with, but with Bullet Station and Kingdom Valley being here, it looks like we may be in for a decently sized Shadow campaign. Kingdom Valley in particular is one that I'm really excited to see, because I've always loved the aesthetic, and I've just been an 06 fan in general, so these new Shadow levels could be really cool. Unfortunately, we don't know very much about them beyond what was shown in the trailer, unlike the Space Colony arc level that was featured in the demo at Summer Game Fest, but I'll get to that in a bit. Regardless though, I'd say this trailer did a great job at getting me more hyped for Shadow's portion of this game, because while I've been excited from the beginning, I had a bit of skepticism on how Shadow's levels would actually play after seeing the first trailer and playing Cyberspace and Frontiers, but so far it seems like the level designers here are doing a good job at least based on the 10 or so seconds that I can actually see of these levels. Shadow's new powers also look crazy. He's got that venom in him. Or maybe not, but I mean, hey, the comparison's there. And plus, I've been seeing a ton of art on Twitter of Shadow with these wings, and I just love seeing it all. You know Sonic is in a good spot when hundreds of artists are all redrawing the same sequence. Aside from Shadow stuff though, we can see a bit of what modern and classic Sonic's levels will look like. And, uh, yeah, that's certainly Sonic Generations if I've ever seen it. Is it bad if I don't really care too much about this part? Don't get me wrong, Generations is one of my favorite Sonic games of all time, but if I wanted to play Sonic Generations, well, I already have it right here. So the new Shadow stuff is what's getting me hyped here, and not necessarily some updated Generations graphics. At least they do look good though. Thankfully we managed to avoid a Sonic Killer's Ultimate situation. And then at the end of the trailer, we get to see some of the pre-order and deluxe edition bonuses. Stuff like a Sonic Adventure skin for Sonic, an additional level for Shadow, skill points, and is that a Terio skin? Talk about a deep cut reference. I had almost forgotten all about Terios, but that's a super cool deluxe edition bonus if you're into the skins. If you buy the game on PC though, you could just mod it in for yourself, but I didn't tell you that. And now that I've gone over all the obvious things, it's time to dig a bit deeper into the Summer Game Fest demo, and some first impressions from people who have actually played the game. First up, some gameplay footage from VGC, showing off a bit of Sonic's levels, but again, we don't care about that part as much. What's important here is the Shadow stuff, of which we get the full first level, and the Biolizard boss fight. There's a couple weird editing cuts, but they only skip a few seconds of gameplay, which we can see from the actual live demo footage. Of course, the footage we can see is being played by someone who is using a controller without the right trigger. That's the boost button in this game, like it was in Frontiers. Since they almost never boost in the entire level, making it look slow and empty. But in reality, you'd usually be blasting through most of this level. I guess it lets us see how good the visuals are in this level though, because they're really really good. I think I said that in my last Shadow Generations video too. I also really like how expressive Shadow looks here, because it felt like for a while we were getting super stagnant and lifeless animations in Sonic games. So I'm glad to see some actual animation being put into these characters again, in this game as well as with other things like Sonic Prime. We can see that the level does indeed have multiple paths, something I know a lot of people were hoping for, and while I do still think there's plenty of room to grow in terms of Sonic level design, this definitely does look like a step up from Cyberspace. Plus it's also supposed to be the first level of Shadow's portion, so I'd imagine it won't be as complex as some of the later ones. A lot of these look like minor skips, but that's what makes them perfect for replaying and learning the level to get faster times, aka exactly what a Sonic level should be. I will say though, I'm not going to pass any hard judgement on these until I actually play them for myself, just like I said previously, because you never really know definitively how they'll be until you actually get to try it out. That goes for people who hate on the level design, and also people who blindly defend it. Just give it a try for yourself first. Then we can discuss on how this may or may not be better or worse than cyberspace. Enough about that though, let's move on to how absolutely cinematic this level looks. 
Sure, it might get slightly annoying after replaying the level dozens of times, but I'm just glad this level of effort is even being put in at all. The part where Shadow goes into Chaos Control and just beats this missile up and sends it flying back is awesome. There's quite a few of these mini cutscenes spread throughout the level, which I think is a really nice way of breaking up different sections of gameplay, similar to the loading screens in Sonic Adventure, like in Emerald Coast or Speed Highway, but of course, we get a full-on cutscene to show the change in environment. We saw Black Doom in the last trailer, so we already knew Shadow's story revolved around him in some way, but it seems like Shadow meets him for the first time again in this level. That's about it for the first level though, you can watch the full thing, mostly, uncut, if you want, I'll leave it linked in the description. But we've also got that Bio-Lizard fight to go over too. Now just to get a little ahead of things, this fight apparently won't be easy. Not sure how not easy this will be, since it doesn't seem super challenging based on the gameplay, but Sonic Team did say in an interview that they wanted this fight to be challenging, since the Bio-Lizard is originally the final boss of Sonic Adventure 2, so just keep that in mind I guess. The fight isn't just a one-to-one -one recreation of the fight from SA2 though, you can see pretty early on that there's some additional mechanics and phases thrown in here to spice things up, which I'm a fan of, since most Sonic boss fights aren't usually too hard or memorable. I'd say if Sonic Team can keep delivering boss fights on the level of the Titans from Sonic Frontiers, then we'd be in a pretty good spot. And that's all the gameplay that we got from the Summer Game Fest demo. There have been quite a few interviews and first impressions going around, some of which go into more detail about the game, like collectibles, game mechanics, level design, performance, and a bunch of other stuff. I highly recommend checking out SSF1991's Twitter, I'll leave that link down below too, since he's done a great job at documenting all of these interviews and thoughts on the Summer Game Fest demo, and just Sonic news in general. So if you'd like to do a deep dive into this game, that'd be where I recommend you head first. Again, you should also go check out some other creators' videos who actually play the game for themselves since they go a lot more in-depth with their thoughts and also provide some in-person footage from the demo. There's a lot to go over with Shadow Generation so far, too much for just one video, so before I start rambling on, I'm gonna end this one here. Thanks for watching until the end of the video. I'd like to hear your, civilized, thoughts on Shadow's levels, so leave a comment down below on what you think of them. Drop a like and hit the subscribe button while you're down there as well, and check the description for all the links that I said I'd put down there. I think Sonic X Shadow Generations is cooking so far. Will Sonic Team burn it? Who really knows. But so far, I'm hearing decently good things about it, so I'm hopeful that they won't. Anyways, I'll see you next time.